Hello, we're going to take a deep dive into the meaning of the planets. We're going to start with the sun, and in describing the meaning of the sun in vibrational astrology, we're going to also discuss the basic concepts of how we interpret planets. And of course, when we say the word planets, that includes the sun and the moon. So in vibrational astrology, as you probably know, we look at the planets as regulating a process. Sounds a little bit abstract at first. Well, there's a lot to this, and I want us to think a little more deeply about it, because I refer to this in several other videos, but we really need to take some time to think deeply about this, have a kind of like a meditation on what we're saying, and really fully appreciate it. So, he, and, and also, in appreciating it, some of the issues that are being addressed by this approach to interpretation. So, let's start off with the sun. If we think about the sun, physically, out there, the sun lies at the heart of the solar system, obviously, we on planet Earth and all the other planets are going around the sun. We all know that. One thing that is not so obvious is how big the sun is. It's 99.8% of the solar system's mass. Wow. So even Jupiter, Saturn, the so-called giant planets are tiny, you know, almost negligible. Think about 99.8%, you know, it's almost 100%, the planets are so tiny compared to the sun. Just an interesting phenomenon, you know, just how big the sun is in relationship to all of the planets, all of the minor planets and asteroids, etc. You could fit about 1 million Earths inside the sun, a million of them. This is for, uh, from the website space.com, so it's an astronomy site. It's a reliable source of astronomical information. So it's interesting that the sun is 99.8% of, of the solar system, so massively dominating. Uh, but in astrology, the sun is not like 99% of the chart. So, you know, that's fine. I'm just pointing that out um, that we do give more emphasis to objects that are closer to Earth, like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, etc. They're relatively close. We don't put as much emphasis on objects that are way out in the Kuiper belt. There's hundreds of thousands of objects going around the sun. You know, we focus on 10, basically, in Western astrology, the bigger, closer ones, which makes sense. So we do emphasize the things that are bigger and closer. Also, visually, the sun and moon are dominant. The sun and moon are about a half, <clears throat> excuse me, about a half a degree in diameter. Jupiter, at its largest, is almost one minute. You know, obviously, there's thirty minutes and a half and a half a degree. So. You know, we know that. The sun and moon are, are bigger physically. They also appear bigger in the sky, especially the sun is really huge. Um, now, here's another thing to think about. Suppose that Pluto went off its orbit, like something happened. It got hit by a meteor or something, and it just flew off into space and went off its orbit, like Pluto just, boom, took off somehow. It's not going to happen, but just suppose it did. What would happen? Probably life on Earth would continue. I mean, you'd wake up the next day and, you know, probably wouldn't be that much difference. According to us astrologers, there would be some kind of change in our moods or our feelings or something, but life would still be sustainable agriculture would still go on. I don't think there would be an effect, a huge effect on weather. I mean, there would be some effects on sunspots, cycles, and so on. But life would probably go on if there was even a very minor change on the sun. The slightest change, wow, it's going to have tremendous effects on Earth. You know, a, a very 
mild change in the activity of the sun uh, you know, can cause droughts and, you know, whatever, extreme heat or cold, obviously. We're, my point is the obvious. We're extremely dependent on the sun and, and the constancy of the sun. Um, you know, obviously there are solar flares and, and things happening on the sun and they, they have a big effect on us. So it's just interesting that the sun has such a huge, dominating, all-powerful effect on our physical eyes, but astrologically, it's given much less emphasis. Uh, you know, I see a little bit of an inconsistency there. So maybe that doesn't bother you, but I see it as a, a little bit peculiar. Peculiar. Let's just put it that way. Now, but from the point of view of vibrational astrology, we are able to resolve that. We are able to make sense of the fact that the sun is so dominant uh, in our lives. And in a sense, it's dominant in vibrational astrology, but in a way that's also consistent with astrology. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But the point is, there are these kinds of cognitive dissonance or, or peculiar things in astrology and it's nice if we can get a nice, you know, a simple, clear feeling about that. To, so there's not this curious, strange thing going on. It's okay when there are curious, strange things going on, but even better if we're able to resolve them. And this idea of basic functions resolves it because the sun and moon, I'm going to make an analogy to air and water. Air and water are extremely basic and fundamental. Obviously, no life happens, well, no human life happens without air and water. If you remove air and water, you know, they're just fundamental. And also, they don't have, you know, a lot of color, a lot of, you know, they're kind of more or less invisible or transparent. Uh, and we take them for granted. We're breathing. We're not usually aware we're breathing. And, you know, our bodies need water all the time. We get thirsty, so we drink. But we take them for granted. Um, and we give attention to whatever we're doing. We're interested in astrology. We're, we want to make dinner. We go for a walk. We play tennis. Whatever it is we do, that's where our attention is. So the air and water create a basic foundation for the things that we engage in that are more specific. And the sun and moon do exactly that. They set a basic essential functions upon which everything else can happen. So here is what the sun actually does astrologically according to vibrational astrology. What you see in the lower right corner is a wire. That's like a, you know, a, a power line. That's a wire. And there's a little arrow pointing to it. And what this wire represents is the timeline. It represents time. Time just marches forward. Like I can snap my fingers this instant. Everybody on planet Earth, if I snap my fingers, everybody on planet Earth is sharing that instant of time. One minute later, we've, it's as if we've moved down this line, uh, this arrow of time. Time is like a one-way road. It just moves forward at a steady speed. At least this is what we experience. Some people may say, no, no, no. There's other kinds of realities. There's a place where, you know, time collapses or something. That may be true. That may definitely be true. But it's not what we experience in our daily lives. When we're dreaming or other situations, it can be different. But in our daily lives, as we go about our daily activities, we're on the arrow of time. What the sun does is it connects us to the arrow of time. 
The sun is out during the day and during the day when we see things and we're active and we're present that we're on the arrow of time. What the sun does is it connects us to the arrow of time. Without the sun, there's no awareness. Without the sun, there is no simple, single reality. You might be immersed in some kind of divine, multi-dimensional reality of some kind. Then you're not attuned to the power of the sun. Just like Venus has to do with beauty. If you're not involved with beauty or doing something else, you're not channeling Venusian energy. When you're channeling the sun astrologically, what the sun does is it connects us to the arrow of time and therefore it makes us conscious, awake, and aware. It makes the foundation of being alive. So, Let's read this from the top. Instead of at, quote, as above, so below, unquote. Instead of as above, so below, and the idea that there's some kind of direct correspondence between what is in the sky and what we experience in our lives, right? That's one idea of astrology. As above, so below. Like the sky is like a reflection of what's going on on Earth. That's not how we see it in vibrational astrology. There's not, like, it's not like a, the astrology charts like a crystal ball and just what you see on earth is also in the sky just some kind of synchrony that's going on at two levels i mean that's cool that would be i have no problem with the concept it just happens to not be how it works so it's and and if you say instead of events that what's happening our lives is reflected in the sky as a myth that astrology is essentially mythic. This is, you know, one variation of modern ideas in astrology. We also believe that's not exactly what's happening. Again, it would be fine if it was. It just happens to not be what's happening. What's happening is that astrology operates at a higher dimensional level. And it from that higher dimensional level, it precipitates into our lives. And it operates through these basic functions. You could call it a kind of spiritual dimension or a kind of primal level of reality, just like, or the basic essential functions. So without the sun, there's nothing. There's no point in having Venus, Mars, Jupiter, etc. They all provide specific functions, assuming that you are connected to the timeline that you are awake, conscious, and present. So the sun has to do with what's present. And the sun doesn't care about the past, the history, the heritage. It's not that concerned about the future. It's just about being aware, awake, to be able to see what is. So again, imagine a wire, a heavy, or, or a rope, or a clothesline that extends as far back to one side of us into the past, as it does to the other side of us in the future. That this wire that I'm showing in this diet, in this little image, extends as far as we can see. And one side is going back further in the past, the other side further back, further into the future. And we happen to be where that arrow is pointing on that point. That's what the sun does, connects us to that point. And it makes the reality that we have as we live on planet Earth. The miracle, you could call it, and the gift of the sun is that it anchors us to the current moment. All awareness and all experiences are possible only because of the sun. Thus, the sun is 99.8% of importance in astrology as well as in life. But in the way that our lives play out, the sun has one effect and is comparable to the other celestial objects in our lives. So it's, it's, uh, it may sound contradictory, but it's not. What's happening is that as a basic function, the sun is 99.8%. But when you put the other planets in there with their functions, 
and the roles they play, that 99.8% that makes the whole story of life possible becomes one function. And that function of the sun within the context of the chart is it shines a light on things. It brings you into the current visible present moment. So to read the second paragraph, in VA, the sun is understood to shine a light on anything it touches. By the way, in the next few slides, I'm going to give more concrete examples. I know this is a little bit abstract, but on the next slides, I'm going to make it more concrete situations and um, circumstances in which you see the sun is active to make this clear. So it will become more concrete. But to continue, the sun brings us into the clear and present situation and a clear, unblemished awareness and experience. The sun is like being outside on a clear day when there are no clouds in the sky. It's boom, light, here it is, that's it. It's like a what you see is what you get. There it is. The sun shows where we can make a clear and direct, simple and uncluttered effect. We become the center of attention because there are no deep hidden motivations or agendas. So the sun in your birth chart, when you're interpreting the sun, it's not involved with deep hidden motivations or agendas. Now, people will say, oh, sun is in Scorpio. It's deep. It's interested in these hidden agendas. Well, you know, we have a slightly different take on that in vibrational astrology. The sun is not like that, that the moon, other planets can go into deep hidden things. That's not what the sun does. The sun is the light of day. It's like a Greek statue. You know, maybe I should have put an image of a Greek statue here, but you, you get the idea. Clean, sharp, realistic. It's like a photograph, unadulterated. The sun is, and now let's get more specific. The sun is very important for our careers. So the sun is the most important career planet. Um, Saturn ends up being very important as well. When we get to Saturn, we'll talk about that. The sun is one of the most important career plans, vocation. Because what happens in your vocation? You are clear and present. I'll talk about that more on the next slides. Okay, so the idea of the sun is that life is not always complicated by the history and heritage of things. You know, as astrologers, we're always interested in the history and the backstory. You know, we're like psychologists who are looking at the hidden things going on. But the sun is not really about that. The sun is, is just what is right now. And sometimes you make a stronger statement by a clear and present reality. So in astrology, the sun brings a kind of simplicity and an immersion in a moment. The sun lacks wisdom. It lacks depth. It lacks a sense of planning and a lack of strategizing. It's simple, innocent, direct, and right there. It, it, every planet has advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage of the sun is that it is just here. Simple, unadorned, uncomplicated, and unaware of everything outside of the moment. So the sun ends up being very limited in its capabilities, even though it's that capability of making you conscious upon which everything else depends. So the sun is 99.8% of everything in that sense, but within the context of the chart, it's also just your ability to be present, to be in the here and now. We're going to, again, next paragraph, we're going to start getting more specific about how you interpret the sun in the birth chart. So the sun brings our attention away from the past, away from the future, caps our attention, captures our attention right now. Now, here's some images of how the sun works in astrology. Imagine the unveiling of something, such as imagine a car company says, here's our new model cars for the next year, and they have a big announcement and a big show, 
and they put it on the stage or something and they put lights on it. Boom, here's the new car and has these features or any kind of product like a computer company or a cell phone company says, here's our new model of the computer or the cell phone, you know, or anything. It's like the unveiling, the unveiling. And they present it to the public for the first time. So the, let's say it's a car or a cell phone. Wow, that has an enormous history and heritage. All the planning, all the hard work, all of the development, all of the history is phenomenal. But what is going on with the unveiling? We're not focusing on that. Yes, they sometimes you know, give thanks to people and acknowledge people, but most of the event is about now. It's about what we have now because people don't really care that much about how you got to where you are. What they care about is how well does this work, this new car work or this new computer or this new cell phone, how well does it work, how fast is it, how expensive is it, what is it right now? That's, of course, that's the interest. That's what the unveiling is about. Oh, this car can go from zero to 60 miles in five seconds. Oh, it can do this. Oh, it doesn't, you know, it uses, it's a hybrid, so it uses less gasoline, therefore it costs less money to maintain. <clears throat> Excuse me, it has this many safety features. We're interested in the features. We're interested in what is it? That's what we want to know. What is it? Later on, after we found out what it is, what it costs, what it will do, how it functions, how often it will break down, what is this thing? What does it look like? What is it? That's the sun. Later on, we could talk about how we got there. You know, who did what work or made what discoveries. That emphasis on what is it is the sun. So an unveiling is extremely solar. Where your interest is in what something is now, not how you got there. Because whether that cell phone got there because people in Japan made discoveries, or people in Germany made discoveries, or people in Brazil, or the United States, or Mexico, wherever they made these discoveries, you know, we don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to know is, what will it do for me? How well will it work? How often do I have to recharge it? We want to know what it is. The more you want to know what something is, and the less you want to know about how it got to be there, or where it could be in the future, the more you're talking about the sun. So an unveiling, an announcement, is a solar event because the emphasis is on what is. Nothing in life is 100% an expression of one planet. So I'm not saying that an unveiling is 100% solar. Of course not. I'm just saying it's more of a solar event. So if somebody says, we're going to make an announcement about our new you know, cell phone, I'm going to look at the sun. I'm going to look at transiting sun. I'm going to look at the sun and the charts of the people who are involved in it. I want to know about the sun because that's a solar event. What is the announcement? The lights are literally going to shine on this thing at that moment and try to engage people at that moment. Engage them, have them involved, have their eyes open up and be fully absorbed into now. And it'll be so interesting to them that they won't be thinking about the history or the far distant future. They're just going to be engaged in what's happening now. This is what the sun is in the astrology chart. So I've explained what, it, what the sun is in reality in vibrational astrology. There's an interesting thing in vibrational astrology. There's, there's the, the, the most deepest level of what the planets are doing and then there's what they're doing in, in relationship to us in real life. What the sun is ultimately doing is connecting us to the timeline, that arrow of time. But in, in chart interpretation, we're not thinking about that so much. We're thinking more about 
what I just described, the unveiling, the presence, the here and now. And let's talk about this presence, this here and now, and why the sun is so important in our vocations, our careers. And this is why, because in many lines of work, many activities, the interest is on the right here and now, and not so much what our history is or what our future plans are. So for example, suppose you, have, you own a car and suppose your car needs to be fixed and you take it in to get fixed. What are you interested in with your car mechanic? What his herd or her heritage is, uh, you know, what her family background is, or what they're planning in the future, or are you interested in their competency as a mechanic and how much they will charge you? So most of us, I'm not saying all of us, so for some of you, getting your car fixed may not be a solar event. But for most of us, I think getting my car fixed is a solar event. I just want to know right now. I want to know what what's the condition of my car. Can you tell me the condition of my car? You know, can you fix it? And if you fix it, will it stay fixed or is it going to break down again? Uh, what's going on? I want to know what it is. I want to know what is my car. And I want to know what you can do about it. Now. I'm interested in now. And if the you know, the, the car mechanic or, you know, has a certain heritage or history, went to college, did not go to college, I don't really care. <laughs> now, same thing with your house. The plumbing breaks down. You want a plumber? You want a new house built? You want to purchase a musical instrument? You want to purchase clothing? You want to purchase anything? You go to a concert and you watch someone play a musical instrument. Are you interested in whether they practiced one hour a day, six hours a day, 15 hours a day, whether they, who their teacher was, were they self-taught? You know, a lot of the musical groups, we don't actually know that much. We don't know that, you know, unless you're a, a music fan, you may not know where the Beatles or Lady Gaga got her training, you know, if you are interested in that, you've stepped outside the solar realm. The solar realm is, what is it? What is the sound? Be here now. Just listen. Engage. If you're too involved in the past, the history, etc., you miss the moment. People that have a weak sun miss the moment. They're not here. They're off in the future. They're back in the past. You know, they're whatever, philosophizing, blah, blah, blah. The sun is the light of day. Boom. What did you see? What's going on? And sun so just open your eyes. It's interesting in what's happening. You're listening to that musical performance and you're just in, enraptured by it. You're just, wow, the beauty of it and the beauty of the performance. And that's the sun. You're there. You're present. You're awake. You're alive. You're seeing what is. So how the person became so skilled or talented, what kind of planning did people make to have that performance? What kind of commitment and effort uh, made it possible? That leaves your mind to just enjoy the performance. Hopefully. <laughs> That's what the planners are hoping. They're hoping you'll have a solar experience and you'll just be there. So, um, so what happened in the past is not our concern. All that past just leads up to the moments so you can be there. So vocations are strongly affected by the sun. Why? Because a lot of career activity is what you are right now. What can you be for your client? What can you be for your audience? What is the experience? What is it? What is the house? Not in theory. You built a house. What does it look like? How does it function? How much does it cost to maintain? How much does it cost to purchase? And so what is it? What's the reality? That's the sun. So if the sun is not involved, we often can think, feel, experience very deeply, but we're not able to bring it into a clear and present, direct and simple expression, a simple phenomenon. The sun gives us the ability to present 
to make it there. So suppose you have a talented writer, but that writer is not able to somehow bring it together and to make that book, to get it published. We need to bring more solar energy into it. We need to bring it into the now. We need to make it real, make it present. That's what the sun does. Think about athletics. What's important in an athletics contest? You know, a basketball game, a baseball game, a football game. What's going on? Usually, what's going on is who wins the game. That's what it's about. Who wins the game? All of the past training, all of the practice. Some athletes practice more than others. Some are more um, committed in some ways. But when you get on the court, you're on a tennis game, and there's the court, what matters? is how you perform. How did you hit the ball? Did you outplay your opponent? And did you win? An athletics contest is extremely solar. So you're looking at the sun when you're picking a time for a game, when you're seeing how the people will perform at that moment, in that presence. The sun, what's real, alive, and there. So all of the past has been brought into this moment. It's only the, this moment, this experience that counts. So people take different paths to get to the contest, to get to the game, uh, and some, you know, work at it in different ways. But all that counts is the game, is the experience. So sports, repair, so many things in our careers are about who we, what's happening right now. So, that's what the sun does. Uh, let's see, we're at 32 minutes. Um, so let's take a break here, and I'll continue with part two. Um, yeah, let, let's just take a break here. I think about a half hour is enough. Give you some time to, to absorb this, and we'll continue with part two on the sun. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.